God as mother in the Bible. In the first post in this series I started with an assumption. The one true God is beyond human understanding. God is beyond all talk, pictures and even thought. Anything less is merely a God, an object within the sphere of human thinking and understanding, even invention. The Old Testament protected this understanding of God in the Ten Commandments. In the opening section which talks about the exclusivity of Yahweh we read, You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Exodus 20 verse 4 The word idol, Pesel in Hebrew, refers to a carved object which is used to represent a god. Both the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament, and later Jewish people have tried to keep this commandment strictly. It allows not only no statues of Yahweh, but also no drawings or other pictures. The archaeological record is striking. In a region and time where divine images were common, there is only one object claimed by some scholars to represent an image of Yahweh, though there are many female images that seem to represent the goddess Asherah, picturing God. By contrast with this an iconic no pictures approach, the Bible is full of word pictures of God. Often these combine imagery in ways that a representational painting would find difficult. For example, in Isaiah 40 verse 10, Yahweh is pictured as a conquering warrior king, but verse 11 describes him as cuddling little lambs and carrying them. Either of those pictures on its own gives a dangerously lopsided view of God, but put them together and they're less misleading. God with an image. If you try to picture your God with an image or a drawing, it's difficult to avoid identifying the God's race, gender, hair color and so on. However, if such physical representations of God are forbidden, word pictures are more flexible. So the Bible sometimes combines male and female imagery in one verse or passage. Psalm 27.10 If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Job 38.28-29 Has the rain a father, or who has begotten the drops of dew? From whose womb did the ice come forth? And who has given birth to the hoarfrost of heaven? Perhaps just because most Canaanite and Babylonian gods were presented as male or female, human word pictures of God are not as common in the Old Testament as we might expect. Though Lord is common, rocks and lions are too. One picture that's very common today, Father, is surprisingly rare in the Old Testament. And ungendered parenting pictures, I wonder how you can do that, isn't parenting all about N gendering? Ungendered parenting pictures sometimes replace Father. Hosea chapter 11 begins When Israel was a child I loved him and out of Egypt I called my son the more I called them the more they went from me they kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk I took them in my arms but they did not know that I healed them I led them with cords of human kindness with bands of love I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks I bent down to them and fed them the picture in your mind or the mind of the writer here might be of a mother or a father but no words are used that portray the gender of the parent despite this fact when I wrote my PhD most Bibles and commentaries still entitled the section in ways that named God as father or take the poem the song of Moses that closes Deuteronomy it begins by picturing God as father do you thus repay the Lord O foolish and senseless people is he not your father who created you who made you and established you Deuteronomy 32 verse 6 but it soon adds another thought in verse 18 you were unmindful of the rock that bore you you forgot the God who gave you birth the Hebrew verb there translated as bore you hul, means to give birth to it doesn't mean carry the Bible uses motherly as well as fatherly pictures of God picturing God as a mother who gives birth and nurtures may seem strange to 21st century people calling God she still raises a titter but it was not strange to the writers of scripture sometimes this calling is indirect Jesus talks of the new life he brings as a new birth being born again has become a very popular image among evangelical Christians but if we are born again who is our new mother? the early Aramaic speaking Christians, the Syriac fathers often took Nicodemus facetious question from John 3 verse 4 seriously and spoke of baptism as the womb of the spirit motherly pictures are used several times in very different ways in Isaiah chapters 40 and following in the traumatic situation of exile after the brutal destruction of Jerusalem the prophets faced with the complaint 
Isaiah 49:14. The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. As a picture of God's constant unchanging love, the prophet replies, Can a woman forget her nursing child, or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. The use of motherly imagery may seem conventional, but what about the gasping, panting woman in labor in Isaiah 42? Here it describes God as a soldier bent on destruction. Verse 13. The Lord goes forth like a soldier, like a warrior he stirs up his fury, he cries out, he shouts aloud, he shows himself mighty against his foes. For a long time I've held my peace, I've kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor, I will gasp and pant, I will lay waste to mountains and hills, and dry up all their herbage, I will turn the rivers into islands, and dry up the pools. Though, as the following verses suggest, the thought that this violence may give birth to something new is also present. Jesus as mother. Jesus pictured himself as a mother hen. The word he uses in Matthew twenty three, thirty seven to thirty nine, and Luke thirteen, thirty four to thirty five, ornis, is expressed as a feminine, underlining that this is a mother hen, not a cockerel. St. Anselm's prayer to St. Paul was a key medieval text for understanding Jesus as our mother. He saw the writers of the New Testament epistles regularly picture themselves as mothers of the churches they founded, and concluded that if they're like mothers, then Jesus, who died so that we might come to new life, is surely our mother. Conclusion Scripture is happy to picture God as mother, in labor, giving birth, feeding, and so on. Jesus describes himself as a mother hen protecting her chicks. The apostles spoke of themselves as giving birth to and feeding the churches they founded. So, a couple of questions for you. If these pictures are biblical, can imagining a merely male God also be biblical? Why do you think such language and pictures are hardly heard today? God bless.